Tonight on Y News. Philippine National Police confirms four hostages still in captivity of the Maute Group. Government troops launch surgical airstrikes in some parts of Marawi City dominated by the bandit group and intensify sea patrol along coastal areas of Mindanao. The Department of Social Welfare and Development distributes thousands of food packets to evacuees in Iligan City. Government Chief Negotiator Secretary Bellio assures that the crisis in Marawi City will not affect the ongoing peace process between the Philippine government and the Moro and Communist groups. Airline companies announce a free rebooking and refund of tickets for flights bound for Mindanao. And President Rodrigo Duterte's net satisfaction rating improves despite the odds in the previous months. Why News begins now. From the UNTV News and Rescue Command Center, this is Why News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. Military troops are using air assets or conducting surgical airstrikes in alleged hideouts of the Maute Group members in Marawi City. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The video shows a motorcycle rider with senior citizen at his back pointing an area to a military man in Marawi City. After the civilians passed through, soldiers began firing at specific targets. Government troops conducted surgical airstrikes today in several barangays in Marawi City. Surgical airstrikes, specific yung lugar, uh, di, dapat hindi, hindi mag-miss dahil pag mag-miss mayroong collateral damage yun, isa yun sa mga dapat sinusunod pag surgical airstrikes The AFP is hunting down not more than 50 members of Maute in Marawi The AFP advises residents to stay at home or not go further from their houses Meanwhile, residents in Marawi continue to evacuate to nearby areas like Iligan, Cagayan de Oro and Davao City However, they are having difficulty evacuating due to lack of public utility vehicles. Gusto sana namin sir na may tumulong sa amin para ma-transfer kami ng ibang lugar. Para makaluwas kami dito. Kasi dito sir, grabe sir, para na kami mababaliw. Maraming ISIS sa labas na pintuan na ng bahay namin. Hindi na namin kaya. Tsaka... Kailangan masave itong mga bata. The livelihood of residents in the area is also affected as many have already evacuated. 100% patay na ang negosyo. Kita mo naman, sino naman ang gagasolina? Wala. Mahirap na magbukas ni, baka mamaya iba ang magkagasolina. Imbis na magbabayad ni, wala. <laughs> Mahirap na. But despite the turmoil, some residents decided to remain in their city. Ah, hindi kami nagbabakwit. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Philippine National Police confirms that several individuals are being held hostage by the Maute Group in Marawi City. Nevertheless, the PNP assures there is sufficient number of policemen in the area. Grace Kasin will tell us why. The Maute Group is currently holding four hostages according to the Philippine National Police or PNP. Authorities, however, have yet to release the identities of the hostages. The PNP also assures that there are enough number of Special Action Force personnel in the area. Police officials say they are prepared in case there is a need for additional cops in the Marawi encounter. The PNP is set to release guidelines for police operational procedure to ensure the law enforcers will not violate the rights of the civilians during the enforcement of martial law. We emphasize kung ano yung usual procedures regarding do sa POP, police operational procedures, ganun pa rin po ang gagawin. Meanwhile, two policemen were also confirmed killed and two others were injured in the government forces encounter with the rebel group. The fatalities were Senior Inspector Freddy Sular and Police Inspector Edwin Placido. The PNP, however, denies reports that the rebel have burned down the Marawi City Police Station. Mayroong report na pag-atake, 
pero hindi ho nila, wala hong report na nasunog o na overrun o na occupy yung stasyon. Authorities are targeting to evacuate all residents to avoid further death in the event the tension between the rebel groups and the government troops escalates. The PNP calls on the critics of the martial law declaration to just cooperate with authorities to immediately put an end to the turmoil and avoid civilian casualties in the tension in Marawi City. Makikiusap na ho kami, wag na ho tayong mag kalat pa ng mga gantong akusasyon. Kung magbibigay ho kayo ng akusasyon, tayuan nyo ho. What would we get from such uh, your PNP is here to protect the people? Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Philippine Navy vessels BRP Gregorio del Pilar and its newest asset BRP Davao del Sur has docked earlier today at the Sasa Wharf in Davao City. Monokson will tell us why. Following President Rodrigo Duterte's declaration of martial law, two naval vessels are now in Davao City to intensify maritime security in Mindanao. Brigadier General Gilbert Gapay, Deputy Commander of AFP, says the move is part of the ongoing hot pursuit operation of the military in maintaining the security in the city, in line with the martial law declaration of President Rodrigo Duterte. Ito mga terrorist groups, Abu Sayyab, Paute, uh, they have been uh, using the seas as their maneuver space. And malaking tulong ito, itong ating mga bagong naval assets, in really... Uh, and really having effective sea control ano? and uh, naval presence and dominance in our, uh, in our seas. The Philippine Navy continues to conduct maritime patrols in coastal areas to ensure the security in the area. All of our uh, floating assets are conducting maritime patrols, so dinodouble up natin yan para masecure natin yung ating mga coastal areas. Aside from that, uh, we are also uh, augmenting our personnel para po sa ating mga security forces with coordination sa ating mga counterparts sa uh, PNP and uh, Eastern Mindanao Command. In line with this, the AFP Deputy Commander assures that there will be no abuse of power in the declaration of martial law in Mindanao. It's really intended to, to address these internal conflicts and it is not in any way intended to curtail liberties, civil liberties and uh, basic human rights. Ano? The AFP has also deployed a battalion from the 4th and 10th Infantry Division in case there is a need for an augmentation in the Marawi operation. Meanwhile, the Philippine Navy will hold in Davao City for the first time its 119th anniversary for the commissioning of the BRP Davao del Sur on May 31. President Duterte is expected to attend in the said event. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Philippine Coast Guard has deployed today 10 vessels to Mindanao loaded with K-9 units, Sea Marshals and the agency's Special Operations Group. Aiko Miguel explains why. The Philippine Coast Guard will help in the monitoring of coastal areas in Mindanao. The agency in particular sent BRP to Bataha and BRP Malabrigo to coastal areas of Iligan. We have deployed uh, uh, floating assets in Iligan. Uh, this, is in, this is to support the ongoing AFP PNP operations. Ang, uh, ang instruction ay uh, lahat ng outbound at inbound passenger na papasok sa Iligan port, inspectionin na maigi. We have deployed uh, at least uh, 10 vessels already, uh, 6 yung nandu sa Sambuanga, and then 4 yung nandito sa, sa, ano, sa Marawi. And then uh, we have plans to add another 2 dito sa Dabao. The PCG will also focus on ports as it can be sued as entry and exit points of terrorists. The agency has also called for help from the public. Ganon din yung sa mga tao kung may kahinahinala sa mga pier. Uh, ipagbigay alam sa Coast Guard and uh, pagka naman martial law, we could easily arrest it without the uh, search warrant. Meanwhile, Coast Guard personnel traveled to Mindanao via patrol vessel BRP Batangas. On board the ship are 10,000 relief goods from the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD. Itong uh, BRP Batangas, dapat aris ito pero tumawag yung DSWD at magsasakay nga ng mga uh, goods. Each box contains rice, canned goods like sardines, corned beef, as well as coffee. 
It also contains blankets, pillows, and mats. The PCG says there are three other trucks of relief goods containing hygiene kits to be sent to Mindanao. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, has started distributing food packs to displace residents in evacuation centers in Iligan City. The department also prepared basic items for personal needs of the evacuees. DSWD said its regional offices are now open 24-7, following its red alert status raise yesterday. Meanwhile, the local government of Cagayan de Oro City is now preparing additional evacuation centers to accommodate more residents fleeing from the conflict in Marawi City. For those who lang familiar, dito lang napanpan. Ang city government natin ay naghahanda tayo ng mga uh, evacuation centers for them kung kailangan at uh, kung anong mga relief operations na pwede natin i-extend sa kanila. The Philippine National Police belied the alleged bomb plot circulating on social media targeting malls in Metro Manila. In a statement, the PNP confirmed that the fake information has long been circulating. For its part, the Philippine Red Cross has denied being the source of the information, citing they had never issued any security advisory. Thus, the PNP reminds the public to avoid posting and sharing unverified information. The Senate Minority Bloc is still not convinced with President Rodrigo Duterte's basis for declaring Mindanao region under the state of martial law. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. The Senate Minority Bloc is still awaiting the report of President Rodrigo Duterte regarding his declaration of martial law in Mindanao. This is in line with the Constitution which states that the President, in person or in writing, must submit a report to Congress within 48 hours from the proclamation of martial law. From the report, the minority group would decide for their next action. Kung magkaroon ng joint session, tiyak na mag-uusap. Uh, sa minority at uh, isa po ako sa susuporta na makabuo kami ng common position. According to Liberal Party President Senator Francis Pangilinan, should the President decide to expand the martial law to the entire country without compelling reasons, they would oppose it. But Senator Panfilo Lacson believes that President Duterte will not do such move. Lacson believes that perhaps the reason why President made such statement was because of his eagerness to eliminate terrorism in Mindanao. For his part, Senator Chis Escudero said there's no need for now to convene the Congress in a special session because no member from both chambers has been working to revoke the President's proclamation. Meanwhile, Senate President Coco Pimentel allays public fear on the possibility of injustice or human rights violations on the course of martial rule in Mindanao. The courts are functioning, uh, law enforcement is functioning, if you, are a, if you are arrested, you should be charged, there must be a warrant to arrest, the same rules. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The House Makabayan Bloc is calling on President Duterte to lift the declaration of martial law in Mindanao and will move to revoke it once Congress tackles it. Joyce Balancho has the reason why. Never again to martial law. Never again. Never again. Never again to martial law. The militant Makabayan Bloc in the House of Representatives will vote against the continued implementation of martial law in Mindanao. Anak Pawis Representative Ariel Casilao said they will urge their fellow lawmakers to revoke martial law because they believe it will pave way to more human rights abuses. Tatayuan po, ipindigan po yan ng Makabayan, tatanungin, kwe-questionin, at mananawagan tayo ng rejection. No, vote of rejection for uh, the martial law declaration. Casilao adds that martial law in Mindanao is being used to neutralize not just the Mauti group but also other rebel groups in Mindanao as well. Ginamit po ang kalagayan ng existence ng Mauti group despite the existing peace negotiation between the CPP and PNDF. Isasakay at isasakay nila ang threat ng CPP and PNDF. While the Makabayan bloc agrees it won't be an easy fight since it's a numbers game in Congress, they say they will take it to the streets if they fail to stop martial law. Kabayan Representative Harry Roque says there should be no worry on the potential human rights abuses under the martial law. 
He explains that only the privilege of writ of habeas corpus is suspended and there are other provisions in the Constitution that guarantee the protection of civil and political rights of individuals. Illegal searches and seizure remain prohibited during the suspension of the privilege of the writ. Any person thus arrested or detained shall be judicially charged within three days. Otherwise, he shall be released. One party list representative, Carlos Roman Oibareta, and a co-vehicle party list representative, Rodel Batocabi, say there are limitations on the implementation of martial law. We have more than enough safeguards and parameters na kung ano man yung experience natin before uh, regarding sa martial law. The framers of the 1987 Constitution has put and have learned their lessons. Instead of criticizing the president, let us keep our complete trust in him. Because kung iba naman po ang intention ng ating Pangulo, ang gusto niya maging diktador, mag-abuso, lalabas at lalabas rin po yan. On Wednesday, the House of Representatives might hold an executive session for the briefing about martial law. Senate will also be having its separate briefing on Monday. After this, Congress will have to decide whether there is a need to revoke the proclamation or extend its implementation. Joyce Balancho, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. A constitutional law expert says the martial law in Mindanao is way different from the declaration under the Marcos regime. Meanwhile, the integrated bar of the Philippines sees no reason to question the declaration. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. Three presidents of the current republic declared martial law. Former President Ferdinand Marcos placed the entire country under martial law from 1972 to 1981 due to the threat of communist rebels. Former President Gloria Arroyo declared martial law in Maguindanao for nine days following the Ampatuan massacre. Last Tuesday night, President Rodrigo Duterte declared martial law in Mindanao due to the attacks committed by the Mauti group. Some fear this will bring back the horrors of martial law under the Marcos regime, but a constitutional law expert disagrees. During the Marcos regime, only the president decides when to declare martial law. But now, the declaration must be affirmed by the Congress, and the Supreme Court must sustain it once it is questioned, before the duration of the martial law was indefinite. Now, it should only last for 60 days before the military took over the courts and the Congress was shut down. At present, all of them remains functioning. Ginawang mas democratic, ginawang may check and balance, ginawang parang nasoften ang martial law sapagkat this now becomes a shared responsibility. Tatlong kapangyarihan ng pamahalaan ng executive, ng legislative, ng judiciary. There are also no rooms for hidden abuses now as the government has no control of the media. Merong paraan din para ma-countercheck kung lumalabis ang kapangyarihan niya, kung lumalabis at may pagmamalabis yung nag-i-implement dyan sapagkat nahandyan ngayon ang isang active na media. So sa aking palagay, yung kinakatakot natin na marshalo noon ay hindi itong marshalo ngayon. Garcia adds that people should wait until the president makes his report to the Congress on the details of his declaration. At this point, we have to rally first, I think, uh, behind the president. And at the same time, we have to rally behind our troops. And we have to eliminate and neutralize the opponent. And we have to save the civilian population. That, to me, is the most urgent thing to do. He says this is not just a problem of the president and his government but of the entire nation. Kasi kung tayo mismo mga mamamayan ay papalag at hindi tayo susunod, isipin yung problema na nga doon sa maute, may problema pa sa mamamayan. So we have to fully cooperate. That I call is responsible citizenship. Meanwhile, the IBP sees no reason to question the declaration for now. They instead call on the armed forces and the government agencies to use its power with regard for the rule of law. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue. Quezon City. Next on Wine News. GPH Chief Negotiator Secretary Bello calls for the Communist Party of the Philippines to call off their order of NPA offensives in Mindanao. And the airline companies announce a free rebooking and refund of tickets for flights bound for Mindanao.
Y News will be right back. The Communist Party of the Philippines, or CPP, denounces President Rodrigo Duterte's declaration of martial law and orders its armed wing, the New People's Army, to intensify its offensives in Mindanao. Monokson will tell us why. In a statement, the Communist Party of the Philippines says there is a bigger motive behind the proclamation of military rule. Amid the martial law, the CPP orders its armed wing, the New People's Army, to carry out more tactical offensives, not just across Mindanao but in the entire country as well. The CPP also calls on the public to oppose the martial law and conduct protests or mass actions to prevent its enforcement. The CPP worries that once martial law declaration gets support from Congress, the president might also place the entire country under military rule. If I think that the ISIS has already taken foothold also in Luzon, and terrorism is not really far behind, I might declare martial law throughout the country to protect the people. The CPP says the declaration of martial law is an evidence of the weakening system of leadership of the Duterte administration. The said declaration, the CPP claims, would also further cause more human rights violations in the country. The Commission on Human Rights, or CHR, has also expressed concern that the martial law now would repeat the dark days of the country during the Marcos dictatorship. The CHR encourages lawmakers to thoroughly study the declaration of martial law. Meanwhile, Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process Jesus Doresa says the declaration of martial law in Mindanao will not affect the ongoing peace talks of the government with the Moros and the Communist group. There will be no problem with our engagement with the MILF as far as martial law is concerned because we have existing mechanisms that are working very well. President Rodrigo Duterte has warned MILF and CPP NPA in Mindanao to stop taking arms to avoid being involved in the turmoil. So everyone, let go of your firearms. It could be a pistol, revolver, or it could be a rifle, or him, because you will die. My orders are really to shoot. President Peace Advisor Secretary Jess Duresa, meanwhile, has the request. Isa sa mga mitsa ng mga criminalities doon, yung possession of firearms. Eh, hindi mo na pwedeng business as usual. When martial is declared, it's something else. Hindi na business as usual. Secretary Doreza will go to the Netherlands later for the fifth round of peace talks with the NDFP. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The government peace panel has asked the Communist Party of the Philippines to withdraw its or order to its armed wing New People's Army to intensify its offensive in Mindanao amid martial law. Government Chief Peace Negotiator Secretary Silvestre Bello III says the communist group misconstrued the intention of President Duterte's declaration. Secretary Bello says the proclamation just aims to bring law and order back to Mindanao, defend the civilians, and protect private and public properties. Bello also notes that the CPP's order is an insult to the sincerity of the president and to the ongoing peace process in Mindanao. The local government of Davao City is constantly reminding its residents to follow the guidelines in line with the enforcement of martial law in the entire Mindanao. Marge Pelayo will tell us why. I said uh, in the absence of parameters set by the Armed Forces of the Philippines or uh, the Office of the President with regard to the um, um, state of uh, martial law in uh, Mindanao, including Davao City, yun na lang muna yung gagamitin ng mga Davaoenos. Uh, these were common sense um, guidelines. 
This was the message of Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio to her constituents regarding the imposition of martial law in Davao City. The Lady Mayor is confident that Davao residents are in no opposition of the said declaration. Still, she reminds the people to adhere with the guideline which includes the reporting to the Davao Central 911 of any suspicious things or people. The public is also prohibited from entering or leaving Davao City and other areas in Mindanao except when urgent matters require it. Riding on motorcycles is also prohibited. Residents are also advised to avoid crowded areas and religious groups are told to conduct their activities in the morning only. Minors are also prohibited from leaving their house except when accompanied by an adult. Meanwhile, several Davaoenos say they are not afraid of the martial law. Basta mo abide lang sa mga balaod, tayo nga ikadlukan. Ako, sigurado ko nga mura dili yun siya pareha sa ula. Ako o yun ko anak, kaya nang marisyan lumanggot. Tsaka ron nga panahon, makaayo na para sa ato ha. Some residents, however, are worried over the situation of their relatives in Marawi. Wala mi tulog. Pagkait na wato, ang tulog na kabuntag. Saan ako pa kung mga The military and police continue to tighten the security in Davao City to ensure that no terrorist can enter the area. Marge Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue Philippines. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre defended President Rodrigo Duterte's declaration of martial law in Mindanao. He said the declaration was in accordance with the Constitution and a necessary action to avoid the dismemberment of the nation. He added that some groups and militants oppose it because they claim it is an obstacle to their own agenda, which is to establish their own governments. Aguirre also said they will know what role they will have in the implementation of martial law after the cabinet meeting today. Some airline companies have offered free rebooking and refund of tickets for passengers scheduled to fly to any province in Mindanao. Joanna Anna will tell us why. In an advisory posted by Philippine Airlines on its Facebook account, passengers with flights to Butuan, Cagayan de Oro, Cotabato, Dipolog, Davao, General Santos, Ozamis, Surigao and Sambuanga from May 24 to July 30 may refund or rebook their flights. Passengers are asked to rebook their flights within 90 days from the original schedule to avoid paying penalties. Passengers may also avail of rerouting flights, but the airline will charge additional travel tax and fare. Affected passengers of PAL may also call their hotline number at 855-888, visit any its ticketing office, or coordinate with their travel agent. Aside from Philippine Airlines, the Cebu Pacific has also advised its passengers leaving and going to Mindanao from May 25 to 31. They can also rebook their tickets for free within 30 days, while they can deposit it as travel fund in their next flight. For other questions, passengers may call Cebu Pacific hotline number 7020888 or message their social media accounts. Meanwhile, some officials of the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board are in Marawi City to help residents flee in the middle of the encounter between Maute terrorist group and military. Based on the recommendation of the battalion commander of the 4th Mechanized Infantry Brigade, the clearing operations in some areas of Marawi City have to be completed first before evacuating the residents. The clearing operations is expected to be completed in three days. Because of this, residents are advised to stay at home. Joan Nanu, UN TV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Agriculture inspects several warehouses of garlic following the increase of garlic prices in the market. Ray Palayo will tell us why. The Task Force Alium of the Department of Agriculture has seen 3,000 bags of Class A and 600 bags of Class C garlic at the cold storage of the LKK warehouse in Tondo. The manager says the stored garlics last for only three days, which they supply to stores in Divisoria. The government wants to make sure that warehouses are not holding the supply and immediately deliver the garlic to the market. Kanya nga po itong exercise na to ginagawa natin just number one to make sure na kung ano man ang meron sa bawat warehouse ay nailalabas, hindi po hinohoard. DA said there is currently shortage in supply of garlic in the market. 
The DA says they are giving more than 1,000 import clearances, which is equivalent to 57,000 metric tons of garlic. However, there are only 12,000 metric tons of garlic that arrived as of May 10. May naisip po tayong mga import clearance, uh, pero hindi po lahat nagamit po nila. Ibig sabihin, eh, baka nag-decide silang not to use it because hindi nga po ganun ka-profitable. The DA says it is not harvest season at this time for garlic in exporting countries like China. Ang problema po talaga yung, yung uh, what they call world supply coming from China, pinag-ahati-hatihan natin na lahat ng buong mundo. Prices of garlic in the market is 180 to 200 pesos per kilo in which the normal price during times like this is 150 pesos per kilogram only. Baka naman po magkaroon tayo ng konting relax dun sa tax natin or tarif na pagpasok dito. The DA is now studying the possibility of improving the local production of garlic. Within one year, local farmers can only supply one month of garlic demand. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Education Leta Division is partnering with the Save the Children, a non-government organization in the conduct of a student-led hazard mapping in, the three, in three towns in Leyte hit by storm surge in 2013. Joan Nano will tell us why. The Department of Education in intensifying its disaster awareness, preparedness and management in storm surge affected areas. This is the reason why the department is continuously coordinating with NGOs to conduct school hazard mapping activities. We are already doing preparedness measures since the time three years ago of the Yolanda. These are lessons learned from our schools. DepEd says, although an area is not in range of storm surge, the school campuses remain flood prone. This is why the DepEd will teach students disaster preparedness in accordance with the DepEd Order No. 23 issued in 2015 by the DepEd Central Office. Meron po din ng mga schools that are hazardous to the students. That is why we have implemented 2015 that mandate for the schools, for the school children and the students who definitely know which is safe and not safe for them. Meanwhile, Dep at Leyte says they are expecting 200,000 enrollees from kindergarten to grade 6 this school year, 98,000 from secondary, while 20,000 for senior high school. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Majority of Filipinos remain satisfied with how President Rodrigo Duterte runs the government. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. The Duterte administration received a net satisfaction rating of positive 66% based on the latest survey of the social weather stations for the first quarter of 2017. This proves that Filipinos are still in favor of the Duterte leadership despite the odds in the previous months. Based on the details of the survey, which was taken from March 25 to 28, 75% of the 1,200 respondents interviewed is satisfied with the present administration. Only 9% is dissatisfied while 16% is undecided. There is a 5% increase in the net satisfaction rating from the December 2016 survey, which is positive 61%. President Duterte got a very good rating in helping the poor. While he is good in other issues, such as fighting terrorism, defending the country's territorial rights, providing job opportunities, fighting crime, eradicating graft and corruption, solving concerns on extrajudicial killings, foreign relations, and reconciliation with the Muslim and communist rebels. Meanwhile, some Filipinos express their support to President Duterte's declaration of martial law to resolve terrorism in Mindanao. Pabor niya ako sa yung dikarang Marisalo para mahawakan nila yung kuan yung tao ang seguridad ng mga mamamayan doon sa Mindanao. Eh, parang maalis lahat yung mga problema natin na mali ang ginagawa ng mga kababayan natin. Malacanang assures the president is working hard to have a trustworthy government, lasting peace and prosperity for all in the country. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacania. The Russian government through its foreign minister has expressed support to the Philippines' fight against terrorism and drugs. Victor Kosare will tell us why. 
Philippines Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano and Russian Foreign Affairs Minister Sergei Lavrov had a bilateral meeting early today. The Philippine Secretary expresses gratitude in Russia's understanding of the situation in Mindanao that led to why the official visit of President Rodrigo Duterte was cut short and also for Russian President Vladimir Putin's statementship in rearranging his schedule to meet President Duterte before he left Russia. It's unfortunate that the development in Mindanao absolutely requires the presence of President Duterte in the Philippines. He was sad to cut short his trip to Russia as he was very much looking forward to this visit for several months. So we can surely say that the visit of President Duterte to the Russian Federation did provide an important impetus in the development of stable, uh, stable relations between our countries. Secretary Cayetano expressed the Philippines' commitment to build true friendship and real brotherhood with Russia. Minister Lafro, for his part, expresses Russia's commitment to help the Philippines in its fight against terrorism and drugs. I would like to reiterate our commitment uh, to working together in security sphere in fighting terrorism, uh, fighting drug trafficking and other matters. So maybe again express our gratitude for Russia's offer to share their expertise experience and vast knowledge in the field of security and fighting terrorism. Lavrov says Russia is willing to again welcome President Duterte anytime he wishes. Meanwhile, last night, 10 bilateral agreements were signed by members of the cabinet led by Secretary Cayetano. In the agreement, Russia and the Philippines will cooperate in the fields of tourism, transportation, peaceful use of nuclear energy, agriculture, trade and industry, science and technology, national security and defense. Victor Rosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Moscow, Russia. A plantation village found in Waipahu is an outdoor museum that features the life of sugar plantation farmers then and the rich culture of Hawaii. The museum also features the history of the first Filipinos who lived in Hawaii in 1906. The plantation village management says the outdoor museum also serves as a shelter for homeless people. That is why it is unavoidable to find trash in the surroundings. In this area, because this is a, a nice area without any homes and lots of trees, we have a lot of homeless living around here. So um, it tells you the story or gives you an idea of what homelessness is like more people coming to stay here and living off the land. To make the plantation village more beautiful, the volunteers cleaned the housing and the garden. Salamat sa Diyos kasi po. Merong opportunity na makagawa kami para sa community. Then may bahagi namin sa ibang tao. Yung mga natututunan din namin na i-share yung mabubuting gawa. Ay, gawain nila Brad Daniel and ano to talagang ma maki kapwa tao maki sama o tumulong makapaganda ang kapaligiran The volunteers from UNTV and the Members Church of God International commit to continue their public service to help not only their fellow Filipinos but also people from other nations Cherry Pama for Serbisyong Kasambahay The organizers of the first Little Olympics of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police and Philippine Coast Guard emphasized the importance of sports to the youth. Leslie Longboen will tell us why. Children of officials and personnel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines including Army, Air Force and Navy as well as Philippine Coast Guard showcase their sports skills during their very first Little Olympics. Among the categories open to 7 to 18 years old are basketball, volleyball, badminton, track and field, and other fun games such as obstacle race. The organizers recognize the importance of sports. That's why they want to train their children in the field at their young age. Ang uh, pinakamagandang nade-develop sa sports ay yung discipline ng mga bata. Yung nag nagiging disiplinado siya kasi kailangan mong sumunod sa mga rules, sa regulations, pati sa regiment, sa pagkitraining mo. The participants really enjoy their games. They say they are well prepared for the Olympics. Masaya po! Masaya po kasi nanalo. Nag-training po ng gusto. Nagpa-practice po kami tuwing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 
gumagawa rin po kami ng mga activities, katulad po ng exercise, tapos jump and jack po. Para maging physically fit, mentally awake, and morally straight. AFP has long been conducting intercamp sports competition for their dependents, but this year, they decided to upgrade it to an Olympics and add more participants. One of its products is retired Colonel Antonio Jeff Tamayo, a son of a soldier. He has also encouraged his children, who are now part of the Army also, to join such programs. Tatlong generasyon na, na lahat ng gagaling sa pamilya, ng galing sa serbisyo. At halos lahat yan, pati yung, hindi lang ako, but anak ko rin, ay pumapasok rin ng national team. Because of a nice um, uh, groundwork or sports for all for sa mga kabataan. The Little Olympics will end on May 27. Leslie Lomboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Tagig City. Former world number one Tiger Woods looks forward to playing again. Meanwhile, Pierre Roland gives his team its first World Tour win on European soil. Aaron Romero will tell us why. In cycling, Pierre Roland of France claims an audacious victory on Stage 17 of the Giro d'Italia. The win gives his Cannondale team a first World Tour win on European soil for just over two years. The 30-year-old Roland finished 23 seconds ahead of Portuguese Rui Costa for his first Giro stage victory. The victory means he is the only active French rider to have won stages on both the Tour de France and Giro. And in golf, former world number one Tiger Woods says he wants to play professional golf again. This after commenting on his surgery for a back injury. The big cat is now recovering and despite limited mobility, he maintains he will compete again with the cream of the crop in the sport. The surgery Woods had in April has a typical recovery time of six months. Nonetheless, the fusion surgery, the golf legend says, provided instant nerve relief. Aaron Romero, UNTV News and Rescue, New York. Superheroes to popular entertainment stars, creativity dress runners showed off the spirit of San Francisco on Sunday. Abby Valdez explains why. Tens of thousands of costume competitors found the pavement in San Francisco for the iconic Bay to Breakers race from the Embarcadero to Ocean Beach. Racers and bands of costume revelers who didn't really bother with the race could be found fanning out across the city by noon. And this year's costumes included some of the usual cultural zeitgeist stuff. This was the 106th running of this beloved race, and as for the actual racers, Philemon Keboy of Kenya and Buze Riba from Ethiopia won the race in male and female category respectively. No alcohol, floats, or large bags were allowed in the interest of safety and security. Abby Valdez, UNTV News and Rescue, San Francisco, USA. Those are the reasons behind the news, May 25, 2017. I am Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Darlene Basingan. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why News.